Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and yesterday Apple released iOS 17.6 RC or release candidate. That means it's the final version, which used to be called GM or golden master that's released to developers and public beta testers. And as long as there's no additional issues, it's the same version that gets released to the public. You just get to try it out a little bit early if you're a developer or beta tester. Now this came in at a very large 6.5 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 pro max, and it's going to reinstall the entire operating system. Once you go from a developer version to a full version back to the public version or from public back to beta. So this is going to be a very large install on any device you're actually switching on. Now, Apple released a ton of other updates along with this, not just the 17.6 updates with iPadOS 17.6 RC all the way to macOS updates, but they also released iOS 18 beta four. I have a separate version or video on that version, and there's lots of different updates that came out with that. So tons of different updates yesterday, but let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, as you can see, the build number is two one G seven nine. And as long as there's no additional issues, this should be the same build released to the public. As long as there's not an RC two version. And you'll see, it says this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. And while that's true, that's not really specifying what they've fixed because there is quite a few different changes in here, as well as some feature updates. And the the same is true with the actual install page where it says this update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. They really need to fix this so that they give us more information, tell us what bug fixes are here, but also what new features are here as there's a couple to talk about. But as far as this update goes, let's go ahead and talk about what's new. And the first thing is there's no new modem update. If you're coming from beta four to the RC, but there is, if you're coming from 17.5.1 to the RC, so there will be a modem update there as far as new features. Well, the first thing has to do with repair mode on iPhone. That's something they've actually included. And if we go into find my and within find my this device specifically, if we tap remove this device, you'll see, we can go into repair mode. Now we had this before, but there's an update where it just changes it a little bit and it looks like there's code actually to remove it from repair mode a little bit differently. Now this could be done by maybe Apple or it just sort of times out over time. But if we tap continue, you'll see it then goes into repair mode where it says ready for repair or trade in this device remains fully functional in the repair state. Now, again, like I mentioned before, there are some changes in the code for this. Maybe again, it has to do with Apple specifically, but Apple pencil pro actually gets an update with this update. So if we go to the iPhone, iPad here. I have the Apple pencil pro attached. And if we, we again go into find my, and in here, you can see we have find nearby, but now we have Mark has lost. And to activate that, we can hit the button activate or remove the device. If you activate Mark is lost, it will mark. This is lost. Someone else can help you find it, but they won't be able to add it to their account. So it's just a little bit of protection for if you're losing this, or maybe you just need to find it, you have a couple new options here. They've also updated it. So if you get water or moisture in your charge port, they've updated the message to say when water is detected in the charge port, it has been updated to tell you to disconnect your charge cable and let it dry for a couple of hours. So it's just been updated a little bit, same sort of message, but different wording. Within the news app, maybe you're following sports and you're following your favorite sports team. You can of course get more coverage. It says no signal, no problem when you go into it for the first time. And it says Apple news plus will now automatically download stories and puzzles. So you can read and play even when you're offline. If we tap continue there, you'll see it says, get more coverage, tap scorecards for more information about any game. They've updated this also to let you know that when an event starts, you'll get real time updates on your home screen and lock screen. So that's been updated as far as the sports go. And that's something you can follow just like the Paris Olympics here. So you can say follow to stay up to date, follow your favorite Olympic sport. And then you can pick all of these. Now that we have the sports going on or the Olympics going on with your favorite sports, you can then follow them to get the overall updates here in your dynamic Island or just in your notifications. Apple also updated their own sports app the other day where it says follow live as every MLS and Liga MX club competes for the league cup. And they added an indicator to MLB box scores for pitcher wins, losses, and saves. So that's been updated if you're using Apple sports, but that's not part of iOS 17.6. Now there's updates to contactless payment, and this is something that's going to be allowing you to use different apps or third party apps and change the default for your contactless payment cards. So that's something that's updated in 17.6 as well. Messages can also tell you when 
there's an unknown international sender sending you a message. So that's just a little pop-up that can come up and let you know that just to protect you a little bit more. And the same is true with wallet. There's a new message there. So if you are using wallet and if you have a card in here and then maybe it's tied to a bank where you filed for bankruptcy, the app can tell you if the card is locked due to this. So that's been updated as well. There's also a small new splash screen. If you go into podcasts, it may or may not pop up if you've opened this already. They've changed that a little bit. And then there's new updates for family sharing with an accept or decline button. So maybe you're using family sharing in your iPhone. If you go to add someone new, it will actually give them a new button to accept or decline. That's just a little small visual change. If we go into the TV app and maybe we're watching Friday night baseball and we actually see some of the highlights. If you've been watching any of the highlight reels, there's actually a new option to sort of jump through those highlights. So you'll see if we go through here, in the highlights here, we'll go in. You can now just jump through them down here at the bottom if you wanna jump through all of the different highlights for baseball that you've been following. And if we go into the Photos app and maybe we go into Recently Deleted, if we tap on this and maybe delete, it will now say that it will permanently delete the selected photo. This action can't be undone. So it's just an update there, making sure you're aware that this is not coming back and you can't recover it after you've permanently deleted it. Now there's lots of small wording changes throughout iOS 17.6. Nothing really major, but if you're adding a legacy contact, they've updated what it says, many other small changes here and there. Within this update, there's quite a few bug fixes and I wish Apple would have told us about this, at least in their notes, but if we go into settings and then we go to general and then iPhone storage, many people have said they've gained their storage back with this. So it seems to free up any storage that they've been using. System data is taking up far less information, although this is cache data and it can go up and down. Many people have seen a lot of storage free up on their devices. Also, the speed issues and stuttering that were in beta 4 have been fixed in this update. That's completely been fixed. There's no issues whatsoever with that. Bluetooth headphones should actually be improved now. So if you're connecting them, they should be improved. There shouldn't be stuttering with that. And it looks like they've updated the issue that they were having with alarms waking you up. It seems like it's working properly now and it's going off as intended where before it wasn't working properly for some people, specifically if you were using the sleep wake up alarm with a sleep schedule. That seems to be resolved. They've also resolved the issue with standby. So if you have it on a dock and you've got it in standby mode, so if we place it here, lock the phone, Give it just a moment to go into standby mode. Once it's in standby mode, you can actually now edit this where it was difficult to do that before. So if we go in, press and hold, it unlocks with face ID. We can now edit our different colors again, change what we want, where you couldn't do this before in previous updates, 17.5.1. If you edit this once, you can't go back in and edit it again. This happens on a lot of different phones and it seems like it's resolved in this update. The other thing it looks like they've fixed that they've even mentioned or confirmed other than the ones I've already mentioned have to do with the screen time bug. So if we go into screen time, it looks like it's working properly again and people are reporting that this seems to be resolved. The only one bug that I've had so far is the wallpaper dimming bug where you can see that pretty obviously here where it desaturates. This is in iOS 18 as well, and it was working properly in early iOS 17 updates, but now it just sort of desaturates, and hopefully it's not on purpose. I don't think it is, as it wasn't in previous updates, but I would love to have my vibrant wallpaper on the main lock screen and home screen. As far as security updates, well, when you go to install this update, the only thing you can tap on here is the support.apple.com page, which actually is the security update page. Now they don't update this until it's released to the public, but you'll see the latest updates here. And I imagine there will be quite a few security updates since it's been a while since we had a public release. So of course we'll check back for that once it's released to the public, but they'll update this usually that same day. As far as performance, well, performance overall, like I mentioned before, seems to be quite good. They fixed all the stuttering issues going into things such as music, having going into browse, letting it load. Everything just seems to be nice and fast, including ProMotion or anything else you're using. It was much slower before with Beta 4. They've fixed all of those issues, and it seems to be as fast as it's ever been. So that's great news. And it's actually shown with the Geekbench scores as well. If we go into this, I ran this recently and had 2,996 for single single core 7,508 for multi-core. That's quite good. Some of the best I've seen in a long time and well within margin to make it 
probably the fastest and just perform as you would expect. So single core is very familiar, but the multi-core score is one of the highest, if not the highest I've ever seen. So that's great. Performance seems to be good. And as far as the overall heat, it hasn't been hot at all. This has been sitting turned on for a day or so since this came out yesterday and it's nice and cool just using it regularly. So I wouldn't be concerned about that and it should be refined at this point. As far as battery health and battery life, well, a lot of people on earlier betas had a lot of good things to say about it, but it does take some time to determine whether or not it's great. So we'll have to give it a few more days and talk about it in the weekend follow-up. And if we go into battery health, you'll see I only have 41 cycles on this device in particular with 100% capacity. So in general, it's pretty good, and I really haven't had any issues on it. The same is true with this iPad. The iPad, again, it's going to take a few days to know what it's like, but if we go into settings, we go into battery, battery health here. This one only has three cycles at 100%. But battery seems to be the best it's been in a long time. Most people on the betas report great battery life, and I would expect this to actually have great battery life as well. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.6 RC and you just wanted to try this out, you definitely could do it at this point as this should be the public version. So when it comes out, hopefully, probably this coming Monday is when I would expect it. When it comes out that day, if you're a beta tester, just turn off betas. If you don't want any future betas and you already have this, if there is a different change as far as the build number, you'll have an update then. If there isn't, you're already on it. But if you're wondering if you should install it, well, if you haven't already and you're on 17.6, definitely update to it. If you're thinking about iOS 18 betas, well, definitely you could wait for that. As far as the iOS 18 beta 5 and iOS 18 public beta 3 release, we could also see that next week. We could be on a weekly schedule up through August where we get up to maybe beta 8 or so with a public release of iOS 18, usually in the middle of September before the iPhone 16 launches. So that's what I would expect for that. And then of course, iOS 17.7 betas could be next week as well. We don't really know if Apple's going to have those, but they typically do until we have iOS 18 released. So that's everything in iOS 17.6 RC so far. Again, I would love to see Apple update their notes, give us more information, tell us what they've fixed specifically, and also tell us what features they've added. The update to the Apple Pencil seems like something they should have added, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.